subscribe my channel and you can share to your friends as well. In today's video, we are going to look at another type of immune cells. These are monocytes and macrophages where we will learn about the structure, development and their works. So without further ado, let's get started. Now first introduction. You can see this picture this is the picture of a typical monocyte okay so these are basically amoeboid like these are basically amoeboid like because they are having small kind of protruded membranous structures which are known as pseudopods and they move through amoeboidal movement and they are non granulated cytoplasm they have non -gran granulated cytoplasm that's why they are a granulocyte so the monocytes is comes under the a granulocytes but you will see sometimes under microscope we will see small types of granules so they known as they are azerocells Sometimes they display a kind of granules which are known as azerophils granules. But the monocytes and the macrophages comes under a granulocytes. Okay. Monocytes are mononucleated cells. They are mononucleated. Mono means single. They contain a single nuclear cell. That's why they are known as mononucleated cells and the structure of the nucleus is horseshoe shaped or we can say bean shaped. Okay, the structure and the shape of the nucleus is bean shaped or kidney shaped. Their size may range from 15 to 20 micrometer in diameter. Therefore, these are the largest leukocytes in peripheral blood. Okay. So, the monocytes as we know, monocytes are present in the peripheral blood or blood. They are circulating inside the blood. But as soon as from the blood, when they enter to the tissue, they become macrophages. Okay. We are going to look at this. In just a moment, so they compose about 5% to 10% of the leukocytes in human body. So, 5 to 10% of the leukocytes or WBC in human body is of this egg granulocytes or monocytes or we can say macrophages. They basically constructed in bone marrow and then release into blood. First, they are constructed inside the bone marrow through hematopoietic stem cells and then release into blood. Now this time inside the blood they are in the form of monocytes and then differentiated into much bigger and much complex macrophages when they enter into the tissue. So after first they constructed form in the bone marrow and then about 24 to 48 hours, they resides or circulates inside the blood and then differentiates into macrophages, which is this macrophages. The structure and the shape of the macrophages is quite or far different from that monocytes. It is 5 to 10 times bigger than the monocytes. And the complexity of the organelles that are present inside the macrophages and the number of these organelles also increased 5 to 10 times. Because of this increment, the phagocytic activity too get increased with increase in hydrolytic enzymes. So the basic function of the macrophages is phagocytosis. phagocytosis. Okay, so for phagocytosis, there should be a good amount of hydrolytic enzymes present 
inside the cell. That's why when the monocyte differentiates into the macrophages, its hydrolytic activity or the lysosomal bodies also get increased by 10, 5 to 10 folds. Now, the development of monocytes. How these cells monocytes are developed? We know that all the cells are developed under the process of hematopoiesis and there is a unique type of stem cells which is known as hematopoietic stem cells which present inside the bone marrow. Two types of progenitors get differentiated from hematopoietic stem cells. The first one is myeloid progenitor and the other one is lymphoid lymphoid progenitor or lymphoid cells stem cells from the lymphoid stem cells all the lymphocytes are formed okay and from the myeloid progenitor the monocytes is formed now monocytes are produced by the bone marrow from myeloid progenitor that differentiates from the hematopoietic stem cells which is present inside the bone marrow so from the hematopoietic stem cells get committed to form myeloid progenitor and under the influence of interleukin 3 il5 and a granulocytes colony stimulating factor this myeloid progenitor cell get differentiated into monoblast Okay, so this monoblast will again differentiate to promonocytes. This promonocytes is quite similar to the monocytes, but as it is the initial cell which is formed before the monocytes, so we use prefix pro. This is basically not as functional as that of monocytes. So from the promonocytes, the monocytes is formed, which is having a kidney shaped nucleus here in the promonocytes the nucleus is not as much notched as in the case of monocytes after monocytes which is present in blood they get differentiated into macrophages or dendritic cell when they enters into the tissue the monocyte circulates in blood for about 24 to 36 hours. So, this cell resides in the circulatory system for almost 1 to 3 days. Where they differentiate into macrophages and dendritic cells when they enter the tissue. Okay. So, the lifespan of the macrophages and dendritic cells are much high than that of monocytes now what are macrophages so macrophages as its name indicates it is taken from the greek word which means macro means large and phages means eater so they are the cells which are very large in shape and they are masters in phagocytosis process so, these are the large eaters. You can see in this picture, this is a typical macrophage image where you can see there are the, some extensions and these extensions are known as pseudopods. Basically, these pseudopods are protruded when they come in contact with a pathogen or any foreign microorganism or they can be cancer cells, cellular debris or any foreign substance. So, they protruded this type of pseudopods which causes ingestion or engulfing that to that particular foreign substance. So, this type of leukocytes of immune system ingest and digest pathogens like microorganisms, cancer cells, cellular debris, foreign substances which do not display proteins that are specific for normal body cells on their surface so how it detect that this cell or this particular substance is not of 
not belongs to our its body so basically we know that the body cells uh, body cells displays the mhc molecules okay and this mhc molecules always display the antigen which may be self or non self if the substance fails or the cell fails to display this mhc molecules then these macrophages considered that as a foreign substance and phagocytosed it okay now types of macrophages there are different different types of macrophages which are present in our body and they are named according to their location of the tissue at where they are present inside the tissue so there are basically these types of macrophages alveolar macrophages as its name indicates alveola it related to the lungs so this type of macrophages present inside the lungs the intestinal macrophages is present inside the gut the histiocytes is present inside the connective tissue the kupffer cells is present in liver mesangial cells is present in the kidney osteoclast is present in the bones and microglial or the glial cells is present inside the brain now how macrophages developed or how monocytes get differentiated into macrophages most of the time the macrophages that recruits at the inflammatory site is differentiated from monocytes which circulates in the blood so here you can see this is the blood capillary and inside this these are the monocytes that are circulating inside the blood capillary so these are monocytes okay these monocytes attracted toward inflammatory site or damaged site by chemotaxis so this type of monocytes when they get some kinds of signals from the inflammatory site or injured tissue these signal are basically chemical signals through chemotaxis they get attracted toward the particular site okay and this type of signals are the stimuli that is secreted by the inflammatory site or injured tissues the cytokines is secreted by the macrophages that are already present in that injured tissue so this is the macrophage and it gives signals by secreting cytokines and due to this signal the monocytes comes out from the endothelial cell to that particular site and this process is known as leukocyte extravasation so basically leukocyte extravasation means once the monocyte get chemical stimuli or they by chemo chemotaxis they get comes out from the endothelial cell of the blood ca capillary to the tissue and this process is known as leukocyte extravasation when they comes from the blood capillary to the tissue there is a lots of change in the structure of the monocytes and it becomes macrophages as i just told you that macrophages are 5 to 10 times or more, i think more than 10 to 100 times maybe bigger than that of the monocytes so there is a change in the structure and also the shape from the monocytes to the macrophages they become so large so it's known as macro they become so large and the organelles that are present inside the macrophages is also get more complex the lysosomal activity also get increased okay these lysosomal activity also get increased and the hydrolytic content or the hydrolytic enzymes that are present inside the lysosomes also get increased so now they are 
masters for the process of phagocytosis then they goes to that inflammatory site okay so this is the process by which the monocytes get converted into macrophages this is due to the stimuli or the signals that is given by the inflammatory site or injured site and the macrophages that are present at the injured site is also secreting some cytokines the damaged cell also secretes some kinds of signals and the pathogens which are foreign particle is also give some kinds of signals due to which these monocytes comes and enters to the particular inflammatory site and get differentiated from monocytes to macrophages and this macrophages now ready to eliminate such kind of pathogens or cellular debris or we can say uh, try to eliminate these type of foreign pathogens The assistant of antibodies, opsonization, and they also involved in antibody mediated or we can say antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity. Okay. But the three main functions of the macrophages and monocytes are cytocytosis, antigen pre presentation and cytokines. But the monocytes are not involved in antigen presentation. The macrophages are independent to any other immune cell for presenting antigen to helper T cell. Whereas monocytes does not perform any kind of antigen presentation. So they are not considered as antigen presenting cells. Now we will discuss all these functions in detail. You can see this structure. This is a typical macrophage. As I just told you, it's having the protruded amoeboidal or uh, amoeboidal like structures or we can say the pseudopods. Okay, so we know that macrophages are capable of ingesting and digesting pathogens or foreign antigens like such as microorganisms, injured or dead host cells or cellular debris. The antigen like bacterial cell or viral particles tend to adhere well and get easily phagocytosed. So suppose this is our what this is our antigen or the any kind of bacterial microorganism. So phagocytosis process is initiated with the adherence of pathogen on the cell membrane of macrophage. Okay. So first this bacterial or pathogen get adhered to the surface of the macrophage. So as adherence begins the macrophage starts protruding its membranous extensions which is known as what? It is known as pseudopod which extends around the pathogen and after that all the pseudopods, these pseudopods get surround the antigen or the pathogen or the bacterial cell and fuses together and form a membrane bound structure which is known as phagosome. So first as these pseudopods, all these pseudopods get fused around the this bacterial cell and they fused 
to form a structure which is known as phagosome. Inside this membranous structure, there is a bacterial cell. Okay. So, inside this membranous vacuole, there is a bacterial cell present inside this and this particular enclosed body is known as phagosome. Now, this phagosome enters to inside the macrophage and what we'll do next, we will see in just a moment. molecules that acts as a uh, antigens okay so these the these are the antigen receptors this particular will bind to the antigens which are present on the macrophage so as soon as this antigen and the receptor bounds together they form the form they form the phagosome Okay. Now this phagosome moves toward the cell interior. Okay. So this particular phagosome is now getting inside the macrophage cell and get fused with the lysosomes. These are the lysosomal body which is represented in green color. So after this there is a formation of phagolysosomes which means the phagosome is get fused with the lysosomes and all the hydrolytic enzymes that are present inside the lysosome is poured on this phagosome which causes the digestion or the breakdown of the pathogen into smaller or simpler components. We know that this lysosome contains different types of hydrolytic enzymes like peptidase, nucleases and glucosidases. They digest the ingested pathogens. Now the digested content of or the soluble debris comes out of the macrophage body. So there they comes out. This is the soluble debris that comes out from the macrophage through the process known as exocytosis. So this process begins with endocytosis and then last with the process of exocytosis. So let's repeat this again. First, the macrophages showing receptors that is antigen receptors which is attracted by the pathogen and the pathogen get bind to the antigen receptor present on the macrophages. So, as soon as this binding takes place, the membranous protrusions around the pathogen also takes place and they form a body known as phagosome which encloses the pathogen. This phagosome comes inside the macrophage body and then fused with the lysosomes which contains hydrolytic enzymes that digest this particular pathogen into simpler molecules which are soluble and then this simpler or the soluble debris comes out from the macrophages through the process known as exocytosis. Now I have written something different here. This is opsonization. 
So one more thing to tell about another function of the macrophages where phagocytosis is done with the help of antibodies, where the antibodies acts as opsonin. Okay, the antibody acts as opsonin. And this type of phagocytosis is comes under the process of opsonization. So this is just similar to that, the typical phagocytosis process. But in this, this pathogen is first, this particular pathogen is first get bind to the antibodies. So suppose, let me take purple color. So suppose this is the antibodies that bind to that particular pathogen. And then the surface of the macrophages have the receptors. There are some receptors that are present on the surface of macrophages which are FC receptor. FC is the this portion of the immunoglobulin or antibody is FC. Constant segment of the antibody. So there are some receptors which are known as the FC receptors that are present on the macrophages. If the antigen is coated with the antibody, then this antigen antibody complex. So, this particular is known as antigen antibody complex. This particular antigen antibody complex get binds to the receptor, the FC receptor that is present on the surface of the macrophages. So this and here, this is our pathogen, okay. So this finally leads to more enhanced phagocytosis process. The rate of the phagocytosis is increased by many fold if the antigen is bound with a specific antibody. So what is the function of this? Why this? binds to this, there is a main motor of binding as the process of the phagocytosis is increased with many folds and this whole process is known as opsonization and after that when once it binds to the this antigen antibody complex binds to the FC receptor of the macrophage then again the same process that is protrusion of the pseudopods and the formation of the phagosome, formation of the phagolysosomes and the process of exocytosis through which the cellular debris comes out from the macrophage. Okay. The next and the most important function of the macrophage are antigen presentation. So these macrophages as we know are also known as antigen presenting cells. We just discussed that most of the antigen is get digested and eliminated by macrophage, but some antigen segments or peptides get associated with class second MFC molecules, and this MFC class second and antigen complex then move to the membranous surface of the macrophage, where the macrophage present that antigen to the helper T cell. So let's discuss what is the whole process. First, the process is started with the same just like uh, phagocytosis, okay. So here, the antigen enters by the macrophage through phagocytosis. As we just discussed, that this is our pathogen and it gets engulfed by the macrophages and form a phagosome, okay. Then this phagosome fuses with the lysosome and form a phagolysosomes where the this particular antigen that is seen in a pink color is broke break down into peptide fragments so most of the uh, this you know, digested pathogen is used up by the macrophage cell but some of the cell some of these peptide fragments or the antigen peptide fragments get associated with the MHC class second molecules that are present in the macrophage cell. So this MHC, they form the MHC 
एंटीजन कॉम्प्लेक्स एंड एज सुन आर दिस एमएचसी पैथिक एंटीजन कॉम्प्लेक्स फॉर्म्स दिस पर्टिकुलर एमएचसी कम्स एंड डिस्प्ले इटसेल्फ विद दैट एंटीजन ऑन टू द सरफेस ऑफ द मैक्रोफेज नाउ दिस वी नो दैट द हेल्पर टी सेल इज हैविंग द रिसेप्टर्स व्हिच इज नोन एज टी सेल रिसेप्टर्स and they this t cell is get activated if once it get binds to the mhc class second antigen complex so this causes the binding of the mhc ag complex with the t cell receptor and thereby this t cell get activated okay so this is the whole process of the antigen presentations so let's recall this again first step is the antigen engulfed by the macrophages through the process known as phagocytosis okay and the second inside phagolysosome antigen break down into peptide fragment so here is the breakdown of the pathogen into peptide fragments now the mhc class second that is present inside the cell of macrophage binds with some antigen peptide peptide fragment so here is the binding of the mhc class second molecules with some antigen fragments now the antigen second presents antigen to the helper t cell now this mhc antigen complex comes and display its antigen to the surface now the fifth step is this mhc class second and antigen complex binds on the t cell receptor that is present in the t helper cell which causes the activation of the t helper cell and it causes secretions of the cytokines from the t cell now the next function is cytokine production let's take a quick look at what kind of cytokine cytokines are produced by this macrophages or monocytes so these are tnf that is tumor necrosis factor is secreted by the macrophages the interleukin 1 interleukin 6 interleukin 8 and interleukin 12 these all types of cytokines get secreted or produced by the macrophages which are helpful during inflammatory responses that's all for today and if you have any query please text me below and share your suggestions about the topics you want me to cover in upcoming videos thanks for watching